Hello! And there she is, also saying hello! <laughs> so for those of you who are also into fiber crafting, how many projects is it typical to work on at once? I'm kind of asking for a friend. Definitely not trying to point out myself who currently has, I don't know, one, two, three, four, just knitting projects at the moment. Although I think I might have one more in my closet. Between four and five currently in progress knitting projects. I don't know about you, but I like the variety personally of having a few different things to work on at once. But as you might have noticed, I only have legitimate project bags for two or three of them, which tends to be a bit of a problem when I keep them all kind of close together because all the different balls of yarns then end up nodding up, which is a little bit frustrating. However, I was browsing some more historical patterns once again, and I found this one that is a yarn ball holder. Now, this isn't any kind of knitting project per se. It's more of a fast crafting project that I can then use moving forward for all of my knitting projects that I'm currently working on. Let's move beyond my chatting and let's get straight into crafting this yarn ball holder. The instructions start by saying that you should obtain a 6 inch by 18 inch strip of pasteboard. The closest thing that I could think of to pasteboard was this heavy duty kind of cardstock paper that I found at my local craft shop, which I then cut to the right size. The instructions then say to create a tube shape with this piece of pasteboard by sewing the edges together, but to be honest, I don't think I read these instructions very clearly on the day because I ended up not doing this step until I added the fabric on top. For the fabric, I scoured my stash and my different odds and ends, and I ended up coming up with these three fabric options, which are made of cotton and I believe a poly satin. Though I was drawn to the poly satin because it's so nice and slippery and I wanted minimal friction on my yarn ball while it was in this holder, I ended up going with this beautiful patterned cotton. I also used an awl to poke a hole in the center of the pasteboard and that is where the yarn ends will go through. Though I can highly recommend making the hole much larger than what I made it. I then cut out a piece from this cotton that I chose that had enough width, more than enough width and length for seam allowance in order to attach all the ends together. I think I went a little rogue from the explanations here or the instructions because instead of adding a lining and doing a lot of the different sewing steps, as they mentioned, I ended up sewing this portion on by machine and folding everything under so that I would have minimal points for my yarn to get caught on the inside of this knitting tube. rustled my pasteboard back into the sleeve that I had created out of the fabric. I then punctured the fabric lining and outer covering with the same awl in the same location that I had originally created that hole. Once again, would highly recommend making this hole much, 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 much larger. Then, even though the instructions say to just push in the loose ends of the fabric covering on the inside of this knitting tube, I decided that I would rather finish off these edges so they wouldn't fray quite as badly, so I whip stitched around the open hole. Unlike the instructions, it was now at this point that I decided to form the tube with my pasteboard. I did this by overlapping the ends slightly and folding them in on each other so I didn't have any raw edges sticking out, and then hand sewing down the fabric to each other in a nice, strong, sturdy stitch, or at least as strong and sturdy as I could manage. body of this knitting ball holder is now done, it's just time to add the coverings that will close up the sides. 
I cut out strips of fabric that were a little over four inches wide and definitely long enough to wrap around the edge of the tube. And once again, just using some physical measuring rather than exact measuring tapes, I made sure to cut the pieces just long enough so that it overlaps. And then I sewed on both of the end pieces by hand and tied them up with string. We're now getting remarkably close to the end of this project, although it is getting a little bit dark out, so I decided to turn on some light so we can see a little bit better what we're working on. The finishing step for this project is to add a handle and some pretty bows so that you can hold on to this yarn ball holder or hang it up somewhere while you're using it. I used some ribbon that I found in my stash that I had laying around that I thought looked pretty, and I attached a good enough size piece of ribbon, I think, although in the future I might test this by holding it around my wrist and seeing how it hangs off of my wrist. I think I made it just about the right size, though I it wouldn't have hurt to make it a little bit longer as well. And of course, a very important finishing detail is to add a really cute bow at either end of the handle, just to give it that extra cute finish. I decided that I couldn't wait any longer and wanted to give this yarn ball holder a spin right away. To use it, you open up one side by untying the tie on what looks like a candy wrapper, honestly. And then you have this nice big open gap where you place your yarn ball inside. The next bit is a little bit fiddly because, once again, I made my hole way too small. So if you ever do this, make your hole much, much, much bigger. And I threaded that yarn through the hole that was available. Then you tie the side back up again that you had opened to place the yarn in, and you are ready to be portable with your knitting project. Of course, I had to take the portability and comfort of this knitting ball holder for a spin, so I can verify that it is very comfortable to sit down on the couch and knit on your projects using this. If you use a yarn though that has a propensity to tangle or a yarn ball type that does, like mine, it can take a little bit of pulling and sometimes just vigorous shaking to get the yarn to unravel. I'm sure it's a little easier though with maybe like a center pull yarn. It's also really great because it's easy to hold this project if you are ever standing around and waiting for something. You can just hang your yarn over your wrist and continue working on your project. Or should you want to, you can also become a little bit more mobile. Although I can't say that I'm watching out where I'm going very closely, but I can walk and knit at the same time. That then made me think of those pictures I'd seen online of, I think there was a marathon runner who also knit while running and I wanted to see if I could do it. So I started running laps around my apartment, which I mean, as you can see, it's possible, but I think that's gonna be the last time I'll be doing that. <laughs> I think I'm pretty good with the yarn mobility factor of this yarn ball holder. So I decided instead to test out a few more stationary applications and I took the advice or kind of the example usage from the pattern and I hung it over the back of the chair that I was sitting on, which maybe could be a little bit improved if there is more a hook-like surface like my pantry. So while I'm waiting for my dinner to heat up, I can get some knitting done in the meantime. I'm sure there are many other more creative ways that you can then Use this yarn ball holder to be more portable or flexible in your knitting style and location. Overall, I really enjoy this project as a nice, fast project to work on and one that will be incredibly useful as I have always constantly a thousand knitting projects going on at once, it seems like, and I love to keep my things as organized as I can. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to subscribe if you like historical or vintage fiber related crafts and I will see you next time when I go over a pattern for a 1940s snood or snoot snood I'm not sure anyway see you next time bye